Hi guys and welcome to our channel. I'm Jamie. I'm Randy. And today we are going to Hamilton Branch State Park and we are going to do some cooking. Some Dutch oven cooking. So stay tuned. I am going to make us some dinner. So I'm going to wash this broccoli. I love the fact that I now have my own little working kitchen. Okay, so I got my broccoli all cut up and I'm getting ready to wash these little tiny potatoes and I'm going to put those in and some yummy Parmesan cheese is going in with some olive oil. And here is a tip that I love if you're like us, we're just getting here, we don't have time to actually cook raw chicken. So I love these things um, if you're a meat eater. <laughs> I know not everybody is. I know a lot of people are vegetarians. Uh, I love my meat. Um, so I got these and we're going to add this to it and then um, we don't have to worry with that much cooking because they're already pre-cooked and pre-seasoned. So we're going to add all of these together and wrap these up and then we're going to take them outside and put them on the coals. Okay, so here's one of them all finished. So that's potatoes and broccoli and chicken and parmesan cheese and a little bit of olive oil and you could do this with raw chicken if you wanted to take the time to cook it but we're running out of daylight so i cheated so now we just have to cook it long enough for the potatoes to cook through and i'm using those little baby potatoes all cut up real tiny so it shouldn't take long at all so now what randy is doing Good. is wrapping them up really really tight like this and then when the coals die down we're going to put them under the coals and we'll have dinner all right um, one of the tips I'm going to give you, uh, one of the biggest problems people do full dinners, we do them all the time. Um, if you do not seal them, you will have a dried, burnt dinner, whatever it would be, full burgers or whatever. So you want to seal it as airtight as possible. I'm actually doing double layers on this because it's going right in the cold. So basically you have plenty of aluminum foil. Everything needs to be a crisp fold. So you're literally going to get it completely as tight as you can. Keep folding down and bending it tight. I'm doing this in a hurry. My coals are ready. But you'll make it as tight, as airtight as possible. And just like wrapping up a Christmas package, push push it down, get as much air out as possible. Also, make sure you have something in it that has some moisture. Well, you can actually add a little bit of water. But with chicken, it does pretty good. Um, beef, all of that. Uh, we've even done this from frozen patties. They have plenty of moisture. But the main thing is get it sealed and whatever you use to handle it, be it gloves, whatever don't have anything that's going to puncture it because if you puncture it you start seeing steam come out your time's limited because it will burn otherwise it works kind of like a pressure cooker and it can steam and it'll actually steam the food inside and you will not have your food burned um, anyway just a little tip and once again look at our beautiful view beautiful view <clears throat> all right just another quick little tip um, I don't know if you guys do much Dutch oven cooking I do a lot of Dutch oven cooking I enjoy it these are a non-stick when they're seasoned properly, non-stick surface. A little tech tip here, or not so tech, but a little tip. Pick these up at Walmart. That's a cast iron lodge liner. This is kind of a one size fits most. Um, we're using this cute little Dutch oven today because we're just cooking for two, but I actually took a full size liner and just used my scissors to cut it down to size. And since you do, you do not wash cast iron with hot soapy water, you just kind of wipe it and rinse it clean, this makes it a lot easier, especially if you're cooking something that can be sticky, like our cobbler. This is technically, <clears throat> excuse me, technically not a cobbler. We like calling it a cobbler because it seems like we're doing something. This is really <laughs> referred to as a dump cake. Simplest thing in the world. If you really want to press somebody and press the kids, press the in-laws and press anybody, do this. Simple as it can get. Buy sliced peaches and heavy syrup. You could use, I have spiced uh, apples, a couple different things, but this is my favorite, it's peach. So you get it in the syrup, not in water, and you're going to leave the syrup in there. This is not for the diet dieting folks. This is uh, straight up delicious and fattening. Um, I'm kind of doing this by feel. I'm used to doing this for a big group of people. I'd use like a, like a 12, uh, number 12 Dutch oven. This is actually just a little eight, but I'm going to, I'm going to say this is two cans of peaches. Yep, I'm going with two cans of peaches. Then you get out the nice Betty Crocker yellow cake mix. Do you have to use Betty Crocker? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Really? We're being sponsored for this. No, we're not. We're trying. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. 
Um, no, nah, I just yellow cake mix, just regular <laughs> yellow cake mix. So you, I just put the peaches Although in. Although Betty Crocker wants to sponsor us, we're yeah, happy hey, to take it. Bring it on, Betty. <laughs> um, you don't have to stir this. So I just basically spread it out in the bottom. Now I'm gonna take the cake mix, and depending on whether you like the cobbler more on the the consistency, if you want more of a cake, you actually go obviously heavier with the cake. Um, I'm gonna say this is gonna. I like the cake. I'm gonna go with almost, almost that bag, almost a box. Where's my, my spoon here? I'm not stirring this. I'm just gonna gonna spread it out and judge the depth of it. It doesn't need to be more than maybe an inch, inch and a half deep, which is a lot of cake. But what's gonna happen when it cooks? The juices from those peaches will actually cook up into the into the cake. Well, you see this, that's probably, that's probably three-fourths of a bag. I'm going to stop there. I don't want to, don't want to be blowing powder clouds when I eat this stuff <laughs> so later So basically on. you're, you're judging it based on the size of your bowl. Yeah, exactly. And I, normally when I do this on a big Dutch oven, I'll do as many as um, three of the larger cans with two full boxes of the cake mix. Um, but I'm feeding a lot of people. So see what it looks like so far. That's just simply peaches and syrup on the bottom. Then the cake, now the, now the yum, parquet, <laughs> squeeze. I've done this with uh, taking actual stick butter and just leaving the sticks, the cubes in there. Oh, it'd help if I opened it up. <laughs> and this was new. This just makes it easy. And as Jamie would say, it makes it pretty. Of course, this is so cold out here. This is probably not going to... Not gonna go on real smooth. Probably gonna just kind of, there. That'll do all right. Well, normally you can actually make a couple lines. I just kind of do a little pattern. Uh, about that much. That's kind of a lot, actually. Well, I thought maybe you wrote my name in there or something nice. Yeah, it was gonna be a <laughs> fan life. And again, new because this stuff doesn't keep real well. And while he's opening, we will appreciate the beautiful view again. I hate that my camera won't do double exposure here. It's like and you can look at the pretty thing or you can look at him. And ground cinnamon. Yum yum. On top. You don't have to worry so much about the parchment paper. Um, it's going to close up the lid. It, it really won't. It doesn't really burn. But um, make sure you get the cinnamon to the edge. Oop. I like cinnamon. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> One in doubt, add more. All right, and then, really all we have left to do is cook it. Make sure that lid seals. And that's it. The idea, like you're baking most things, you're doing 350 degrees. Um, go online, there's all kinds of guides as to temperatures in Dutch ovens. Generally, this is a number eight Dutch oven, eight inch Dutch oven. So usually if you put eight coals on top, again, not exact science, eight coals on top, eight on bottom, it should get you about 350 degrees. Double check that. Um, that's kind of how I started out. Um, and I also alternate, I'll add heat to the bottom or take heat away depending on how it's cooking. So I'll check it frequently. I'll show you how we're gonna do this. This is gonna probably take I'm used to on a large size, probably takes about 30, 45 minutes to, to, to cook. And what I generally do is every 15 minutes, I'll rotate the third of a turn and rotate the lid back. I'll show you how to do that so it cooks evenly. I'm gonna take the remaining coals and put our foil packets on them over here on the side. Oops. Nice. <laughs> give you a view again of this campsite because it is absolutely beautiful with the water all around there and our little That's camper it. bathroom area there and our van and when we pulled in there were three deer right up there but I couldn't get to them in time to video them and 
the sun wreaks havoc on my camera. I'm going to get a new camera one of these days, you guys. And in the beautiful water. So this is what we enjoy while we're waiting for the food to cook. All right. Oh, wait, I need to back up. Okay. I missed my first time a little bit. I was doing something else. But every 15 minutes, what I'll generally do, these, these uh, Dutch ovens generally have, these are the, the outdoor cooking type, have three little feet on the bottom. So every 15 minutes, I'll generally pick it up and turn it one third turn. And then I turn the lid back to the same position where it was. Okay, let me show you. Come here, Jamie. Let me show you how this is looking. I had to reduce the heat underneath a little bit because it was uh, starting to get, come to a boil. Oh, pretty. And that's actually getting it was a little bit too much heat, so I reduced the number of coals. But what that does, by repositioning it every 15 minutes or so, it gets even heat in the pot. And by keeping the lid in the same position, it, it does the same thing. It rotates top and bottom. Also flipped over our, our meals, too. <laughs> There's so much steam, you can't even see the food. Potatoes are done. That's beautiful. It's really not, I don't think it's as hot as it seems. It's just that cold out here. Oh man. Look Ooh, at that. Ooh, that looks pretty. Is it ready? It's ready. All right. Guys, what I did, um, I, I rotated every 15 minutes for 45 minutes. For the last 10 or 15, I removed all the coals from the bottom. It was cooking too fast. And I add a lot of coals to the top, so I kind of bake that top down and give it that brown look. So now it's ready to come off and be served. And look at this beautiful sunset. Oh, you can't see it. Let me take you guys down here to see this beautiful sunset while he's serving us up some cobbler. Now I hear some Canada geese somewhere. Look at that beautiful sunset. So pretty. Okay. Now back to the van and dinner. Look at that cobbler. It's really pretty in the plate. Yum. I can't wait to eat it. All right, guys, a couple more quick tips. I don't have my main gear with me. I usually I have a, an actual purpose-made tool for lifting the lid. That's just a pair of pliers. I also have a pair of regular work gloves. I actually have some uh, welding-type uh, fire-resistant gloves that I usually use. A little quick tip, though. Have a plan for when this is done. That we're, since we're at a state park, we have a nice fireproof tabletop here, so I was able to balance the Dutch oven on the tabletop. also had a place to put my lid, but you'll be surprised how many people take the lid off and have nowhere to put it. It's going to be too hot to handle. And they lay it in the dirt, lay it in the sand, and you can't use it to cover the pot back up because this is going to continue to cool. It'll be good um, probably for breakfast in the morning. It'll be good. So just a quick tip. Make sure you have a plan. I had a place to lay this down on this grid. grid. Um, it could be anything from a stone or, again, have a purpose-made tool that lodge sells that you can lift it up and also works as a stand to hold it up. Um, come check out the finished product. <coughs> <clears throat> so you have a nice layer of sweet cake on top and then some of the syrup and peaches in the bottom um, that's a little bit wet for my liking I probably would have uh, gone a little bit lighter in the peaches and heavy syrup last time um, but there's plenty of good cake on there with the cinnamon came out to a nice texture and again this paper lining I just throw it away and then the pot will be 99% ready to go and you know, just to give you an idea of what it tastes like, if you've ever had coffee cake, that's a lot like what the top part tastes like. It's, 
If you want to get um, more specifics, you can you can search. Um, this would either be called just a Dutch oven peach cobbler. Um, some people call it a dump cake because you just dump everything in. There's really no stirring involved, no mixing whatsoever, no eggs. It's just simply the cans, the uh, cake mix, um, butter, and cinnamon. Um, I'm going to do one tomorrow with, uh, with apple, so we'll give that a try. But uh, be a hero. Cook this next time you can. <laughs> be a hero. People will love you for it. <laughs> That should be the tagline. Be, be a, a hero. hero. Right, right, life. Kids love it. <laughs> Take care. Oh, and again, we are loving our gas fire pit here. I can't say enough good things about it. I think I include it in every video, don't I? Yes. And <coughs> the sunset is just getting beautiful. So we're going to sit here and look at the fire and eat more cobbler and wait for the stars, which I hope will be beautiful tonight.